Hello and welcome to All Around the Board. In today's video we'll be taking a look at the very popular Brass Birmingham. In this video I'll be telling you how to set up the game, how to play the game, and then at the very end I'm going to give you my final thoughts. Now just as a note, I got this game during lockdown and unfortunately I've only managed to play it with two players. However, knowing that how two player works, I think I'll gauge how a three or four player game would work and I'll pop that in my final thoughts. But enough about that, you guys want to know how to play this game so let's crack on. But before I start this video, please subscribe to my channel, make sure you leave a like and any comments you have about this video, anything will be much appreciated. Okay, so the first part of this video is I need to show you how to set up. So, as you can see here, we have everything set up and I will go through everything I've done here. Now, even though it's quite a heavy game, there isn't actually much set up. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, the first thing you want to do is get your board. The board is double-sided. The only difference is its artwork. So, I've put the day side on the board and I've put the night side on the player boards just so that you can see the artwork of both. So essentially the other side of this board kind of looks like this with the street lights on, but there is no difference in terms of the layout of the board. Next you want to grab these tokens and take all the tokens with your player count on. So for this video I'm setting up a two player game, so I need to take all the tokens that have got a two player, I need to shuffle them up and then put them onto the spaces with the two player. So you'll notice that up north there that requires three and four player and up here only four player so for this one we're just filling in the spaces with the two players so we randomly deal that and you'll notice that some have got icons and some that do not now some of them just act as empty spaces and nothing will happen with that space for every space that has a icon on you need to put a beer barrel on as you can see indicated in these three spaces Next you need to fill up the coal and the iron, so you only fill up the spaces that do not have a dot in. Later on in the game these spaces will get filled up, but just for the start of the game that is how it begins. And we need to take as many wild cards as there are players. So in this pile there are two cards, and this is the any type of building card. And then we've got two of these, which is the any location card. And just pop them onto these two spaces face up. Then we need to create the deck. So go ahead and take all the cards that have got the player count icon, similar to the tokens that you've just seen. So in a two-player game, I take all the ones with the two, three, and four on. If I was just playing four-player, I'd just take the ones with the fours on, uh, which would include these cards as well. So the more players, the more cards. That is everything you need to set up the board. Now we're gonna go on to the player setup. So one of the most painful things that you have to do during setup is you need to get all of your tokens and put them on the corresponding space. They need to be color side up and not with the black side. So the black side goes face down. And you just look for the Roman numeral and put it on the matching space. Now some of the buildings have got multiple of the same number and that's absolutely fine, it's meant to be that way. So fill them up until you've used all of the tokens and fill them up in this way as you can see here. Then just off to the side you need to put your rail slash canal tokens, these are double sided. Now I've put them on the canal side because we're going to be teaching the canal phase first. Then each player gets their character token and you randomly put them in the order as shown here. So I've randomly chosen purple, then red. If you have more players, you would feed them all the way down there. But again, just a two player game right here. And then we need to put the victory marks token, which is the hexagon on the zero space here. And then you need to take your income token, which is the round one and put it on the 10 space. Now the income is going to relate to this number here but you'll notice that there's two numbers per bracket and then later on there's three numbers per bracket uh, and we'll get to that later on but at the moment just make sure it's on the 10 which is also the zero income. You give each player 17 money. Then from this deck you need to give each player 
one face down card. These are not to be looked at. These act as the discard pile. The reason for this is because in the first round, you only do one action. So this kind of represents the second action that you won't be doing. As soon as each player has a discard, then give each player eight cards. So for the purpose of this video, purples I've laid out individually and reds I've just kind of put in a pile there. But we're gonna be concentrating mostly on purples play. And finally, give each player a reference card. So on here, it kind of gives you an overview of the round, the actions you can do, and then the two eras, because this game is split into two halves. On the other side is this side that you can see here. And it's basically got a distribution of the different cards that you can find in the deck. So if you're looking for a particular town, you know how many are in the deck according to how many players. But I've got one of each just face up so we can reference it during the game. So we will go on to the how to play section of this video. We're going to follow this card here, which says the game round. We'll talk about the actions you can do and then what happens at the end of each era. Basically, this game is played in two halves. We have the canal phase, which is we'll be using the boats to lay out our routes. And then on the second phase or the second era, we're going to be using our trains. Now, each phase is played very similarly with a couple of different rules. So how do you score points? At the end of the canal era and at the end of the rail era, you're going to be looking at your connections, so where your boats and or trains are. And then you're going to count points for any buildings you have face up. So let's go ahead and explain these boat symbols. So when you score, you'll take off the boat of your color and you'll see how many of these icons, you see this black hexagon, see how many of those you have on either end of your route. So this canal was here and I'll get one, two, three points and I will take that off. Now, even though that's red player and they're purple buildings, it's for any building that this is connected to because if I've connected that, it it's probably means that it somehow helped purple throughout the game to keep it connected. So yeah, I would score that one. And then this one, I would score one, two points. Okay, so they would come off. And the same would happen for purple. And in this case, this one only has one, and this one only has one. So it was good that red kind of placed in between purples because they got a lot of points for that. And then you'll look at the any buildings that you have face up. Now say if this was not face up, I wouldn't score any points. This way up, you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner is a point value. So this one's worth five, and this one's worth one. And red would get five as well, because they have a face-up building there. So that is the way you score points. And that is the same way you score points at the end of the rail phase as well. Now that is the only thing that you will score at the end of each phase. So try and get as many points as you can in the canal phase, and if you don't get many, catch up in the rail phase. So let's start by teaching you the basics of this game. Now, this is very simple in terms of actions you need to do. There are specifics to rules, but I'm just gonna go through the basics. So if there's any little thing that I've missed, I will definitely cover it at some point throughout this video. But let's talk about how a round works. So perform two actions in the turn order. So we look at this and we see who's first and second. Obviously purple is going first. The only exception is the first turn we only take one action each. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'm gonna explain everything that I'm doing as we play. So obviously I'm the purple player, purple is going first. I've got my 17 money, what am I going to do? Now it's always good to start with a coal mine because coal mines need to be connected to the other buildings that require coal. So if I wanna build one of these, I need to be connected to coal. The only exception is I would connect to one of these towns that have got a coal mine, but then I'll be paying from this supply here. So it's gonna cost me money, whereas if I build my own coal mine, somewhere else on the board, I can start essentially paying myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and build my coal mine somewhere. So the first thing is, is I need five money. Now when you spend money, it goes onto your character card here. This will become important in a moment. Then this symbol here means I cannot build that in the rail phase, it can only be built in the canal phase. So obviously we are in the canal phase, so I can go ahead and build that. However, I need one more thing because every time you do an action, you need to get rid of a card. So I need to look at either getting a coal card, which I don't, I've only got a brewery card and an ironworks card. So I need to start looking at specific towns. 
I want to look at roughly where I want to be. I'd like to be near some beer, um, and I'd like to be next to one of these towns so I can start selling buildings. These are the types of buildings you can sell to different towns. So ideally, I'd like to be next to this one because I can sell any type of building, any type of the three. This one I can only sell that type. This one I can only sell that type. Where do I want to be near? I think I'd like to start, well, ideally in, oh, Redditch. Do I have Redditch? No, I don't. So I look along here. And unfortunately, I do not have Redditch. So which other card do I have that is close? Well, I've got Colebrookdale. So over here is a coal mine. I have Colebrookdale and I've got the right town so I can actually place that anywhere I want. So I go ahead and get rid of that card into my discard. I've spent my money. There is no other requirements. So I can go ahead and put my coal mine straight into Colebrookdale. In the bottom right hand side here, there is two coal I need to place and I'm gonna go ahead and grab those two and put it on that card. Another note about building is to save you keep flipping over to see what's on the other side, you'll notice on the right hand side here, it does actually tell you what's on the other side of that token. So as you progress through your building types, you'll notice the rewards get greater and greater. Right, that is my one action, then it would go on to Red's turn. So again, Red's got 17 money, they've got a selection of cards just here, and I think we're going to get them building, oh, where should we get them? I think I'm going to put them in Burton-on-Trent, why not? So let's get rid of their card there, and they're going to get a coal mine going as well. So they're going to spend five of their 17 as their first action, and they're going to go ahead and put that in Burton-on-Trent, because I've got rid of that card. And again, I've got to put two coal onto that card. So that is the first action. We've kind of done the same thing at different parts of the board, so we might not end up uh, clashing with each other, we will soon see. So that is the first round done, because we only do one action each. Once we've done that, each player then draws back up to eight cards, so there we go, oh, now I get a coal mine, and obviously red player gets a card as well. I'm kind of gonna put their stuff in a pile and just kind of randomly do what they're doing, just so you can see some examples as we play. Then we need to determine the new player order. So it's whoever spent the least goes first and then second least. Now we spent the same. So the, these just come off and we stay in that order. Then we need to check our income and we're both on zero. So none of us collect any money this turn. Right, now we are on to two actions each. So I can look at my cards and decide what I wanna do. I would like to get some iron. However, there isn't an iron mine near me. Well, that's probably the nearest one, but I'd need Walsall. Oh, look at that, I do have Walsall. Right, what do I want to do? I think I'm going to go ahead and show you the action which is network. So we're gonna start placing some canals out. So quite simply, we pay three from our money. So if I just go ahead and get some change, pay three from here, and that goes onto this card. The other two goes into my supply. And you can go ahead and get a rail. Now to place this, it has to be part of your network. By your network means it has to be connected to anything that I already own. So I've already got this one, and I'm gonna go ahead and link to the town so I can start, oh, let's put that the right way up. I can start going towards Shrewsbury. Now it's worth noting that only one player can take up a section at a time, so Purple Player has taken this already. Also to note that when, because I've linked this to Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury has two points on it. So at the end of this era, I will be getting two points at least for that boat. Now, also I need to get rid of any card to do that action. So which one is no good to me? I think uh, looking at it, I'm probably not going to be doing much over in Can Oh, I might do Canuck area actually, that's quite close. Warsaw is quite close. So this is the tricky bit. What to get rid of, because they're all quite good. I think because I've already got a coal mine, I will get rid of the coal mine card. Right, then for my second action, I can go ahead. I think I'm gonna do the same thing. So I will go and get rid, I'm gonna get rid of the brewery card and spend three money and I'm gonna put another canal out. So you can repeat the actions. As long as you're doing two actions, you can repeat. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that there because I'd like to start working my way towards Birmingham. You'll notice that Birmingham has four spaces. So the more canal routes I can get around that and the more buildings, well, I'll be laughing. 
Another note about buildings is in the canal era, you can only have one building of your type in a town. So I can't build another purple building here. But in the rail phase, I can build as many as I want. So I could actually build a brewery and an ironworks if I wanted to. So we're going to go on to reds phase and let's go ahead and do the same. So they can go ahead and get rid of two cards. They can spend six money. Again, it goes on to here and they can put two of these out. Now I know I'm kind of rushing red's turn, but I'm really concentrating on purples. Now I'm going to put one here and I'm going to put one down to here so that we are connected to Birmingham. Okay, that's the end of that round. So again, we draw two cards, so we're back up to eight. So we look at how much we've spent and we've both spent six each. So again, the player order does not change. We look at our income, our income is still zero. Wow, how do we get income? So we need to start emptying our buildings. To empty them, we need to start spending the resources that are on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at Wolverhampton. I have a Wolverhampton card, because it is purple first. I'm gonna get rid of that one, and I'm gonna build this card here. Oh wait, no I can't because I haven't got enough money. So let's do a loan first. So let's get rid of any card. I think we'll get rid of Worcester. First, when you take a loan, you go one, two, three, down, and you go down in the bracket. So if red were up here, for example, they would go one, two, three, because they go down via the brackets. Now, if there's multiple numbers, you'll notice I went to the top number of that bracket, because you can, yeah, you can go to there, so it's easier to jump back into the next bracket. So that's how you take a loan. So I'm gonna take one, two, three, and for a loan, you go ahead and get 30 money. Wow, that's tons of money. So let me just take that. Now, early game, there's a lot of threes you're gonna be spending to do canals. So it's always worth taking some singles. Okay, so now I took that loan, I can go ahead and do that action I wanted to do before, which is Wolverhampton. So let's go ahead and build in Wolverhampton. So let's go, what did we need? We needed eight money. So I'm going to spend eight money. And again, that goes onto my card. I need one coal. Now, this is how you spend coal. I'm gonna be placing it here. Again, I can't place it on that one because you have to place it on the single first of that type. And it has to be linked to coal somehow. So, I'm actually linked to my own coal mine and it costs one coal. Let's say, for argument's sake, that this was out of the equation and I needed to pay coal to build that building. Now, I am linked to a coal source because I'm linked to Shrewsbury, which has its coal source. If I wanted to build that, I'd actually have to come over to here and I'd pay the least amount that's available. So I'd have to pay one. Say for example, these three were missing and I wanted to build Wolverhampton. Not only would it cost me eight, it would cost me a further three to get that coal. So essentially it is better to do what I had done with my coal mine that was here and I could spend from here. Now it is worth noting that you always pay for coal that is closest. So what I mean by that is by the least amount of rail links as possible, and if it's equal, you get to choose. The reason for that is you can actually use opponent's coal mines. So if this were linked and closer, I would actually have to use their coal instead of mine. But obviously I wanna use mine because I wanna clear this card, and I'll show you why once this is cleared. So that coal goes back to the supply, and that was my two actions, because I took a loan and I did a build. Now yes, it was in the other way, but you'll notice that, oh I, went, oh, I didn't have any money. That's absolutely fine. As long as it's your two actions, you can do it in any order. So purple is done. We're gonna go back to red, and I think red's gonna do something very similar. They don't have a Warsaw card. Uh, I'd like to get them an ironworks, but they haven't got what, ah, I'll tell you what, they have got an ironworks. So this is how the specific types come into play. So unlike the location where you could build anywhere, if you place a symbol, it must be connected via your network. So you'll notice there's an ironwork symbol here. And yep, yeah, there we go, we have the ironwork symbol and it's connected via my canal. So this is absolutely fine to build here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that card. To buy an ironworks, it's five money. So let's take five money from their supply and put it onto this card. And then finally, we're going to take this and we have to spend a coal to build that. And again, it is linked to a coal here. So I will go ahead and take that off and I can build the ironworks. Now I need to put four iron onto this card. Now with iron, unlike coal, you'll notice here it says coal has to be connected via your route. Iron does not, iron can be spent from anywhere. 
Similarly, it can be transferred into the market from anywhere. So automatically, two of these iron will go into the market and the red player is going to go ahead and get one money per. So they actually get two money back to their supply. This is perfect because that now gives me three money and I can start linking. So the second action, I'm going to spend three money. And again, I have to spend it to this supply here. Spend three and we're gonna put down another canal because I want red to start connecting to a town. In fact, we will, we're gonna put it here so that it's now linked to Oxford. This is really good for the red player because they can sell any type of building. We get to selling in a mo. But yes, that's kind of what you wanna to link to if you can. And to do that action, they need to pick another card. So what can they do? I think we'll get rid of Kidderminster because there's two. You can only build one building type and now they've got two Kidderminster cards and they're only ever gonna be able to build in there once so we'll get rid of one of them. Then we draw two cards each for the end of the round. All right, then we need to determine the player order. So again, I think we've spent eight each. Wow, okay, so eight each and that goes back to the supply. And we stay in that order. Then we have to pay for income. So you'll notice that red has not got any income still and purple, unfortunately, because they took that loan, is on minus three. So I need to go to my supply and spend minus three. If I couldn't afford it, I'd have to sell a building and get half of its money rounded down. This would only get me two money back. This will get me three money back, four money back. Okay, so you only get half of the building's values back. And I'd have to sell buildings until I got enough money to pay for this. Now it's worth noting, this goes all the way down to minus 10. You kind of don't want to be in that situation. You're going to be in a lot of trouble if you go that way. Okay, so let's go ahead and do purple's turn. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of any card uh, I'm just going to get rid of this one for the sake of it. And I'm going to spend three and build a canal link. So I'll go ahead and get a canal. And I'm going to link to Warsaw. Now, even though it's not part of my connection, this building is connected via connection to this here. Because when I do the sell action, I want to sell that item to the item that it matches. Now, because of red, they've linked me, thank goodness, I can do that action as my second. So, again, I need to get rid of any card. Let's get rid of Dudley, and I'm going to sell. In the top right-hand corner, it requires a beer. Luckily, there is a beer here, and it's the type I'm going to. If I had a brewery anywhere else on the board, if it were mine, so say if I had one here, and this had a beer on it, then I could spend from anywhere, because... This, this symbol here means you can spend beer from wherever you own. It doesn't have to be connected by rail or the canal. Now, if you wanted to spend somebody else's beer, it would have to be connected by rail or canal. Uh, I don't have a brewery, so similarly, I can actually use the beer from here. So I'm gonna sell this good. I'm gonna spend this beer. If you spend the beer from that town, you'll get the depicted bonus. So I'm gonna get two income for purple, going back up to minus one, and then I can flip this card. So when it flips over, once I flip this card, this will tell me how many points each of my links will get per link that's there. So this one is gonna get two points, and this one is also gonna get two points. You'll notice the building points there. I'm gonna get three points at the end of the era. And this one is how much income I get now. So I go up by five. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Now you don't go up by brackets. You do go up by the individual number. It's only when you take a debt that you go down per section. So that's that one sold and that can just stay there for now. And then for a second action, I think I'm just gonna show you because I've done most of the actions, I haven't showed you develop. So let's just go ahead and do that. So for the develop, I'm gonna pay one to two iron cubes to remove one to two industry. Now I'll look at the board and if there are any on the board, I have to spend them first. It's not in my player color, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna spend the two iron, which for red player flips them and it gives them three income, one, two, three and it gives them three points at the end of the era. But you'll notice that I have a, a canal link to it, so actually I'm gonna get a point in the top right-hand corner. But anyway, that's aside. I've got rid of my two iron, and I can develop. So what this allows me to do is I can get rid of up to two tokens that is in the lowest amount. I just get rid of them and take them out of the game. So I'll go ahead and take this brewery out, 
and I'll go ahead and take one of these three buildings out here. It is worth noting that this is the only one that you cannot develop this way because it has the little light bulb with the no-go. So this one and this one cannot be developed this way. And that is simply that action. I would get rid of a card just to de develop. Now, yes, okay, I did spend that iron, but say if there wasn't any iron, I would, sp I would pay for iron from this section here. So that would have cost me two money if there were no iron on the board. Now it's back to red and we're going to just talk about the final action that you guys have not seen yet and this is the scout action. It says discard two cards for a wild industry and a wild location. So to do that action I have to pay a card. Now I'm doing the action I have to discard two cards. And the reason why you're paying one and then discarding two is because you're then going over to here and you're getting one of these and one of these. This is for a wild industry and a wild location, and they become part of the hand, okay? So you can see that we're back up to the right amount of cards they should be. Now, the wild location can be spent to build anywhere you want. It doesn't have to be part of your network. I can go build up there if I wanted to. I could just build anywhere I want. And the wild industry is I can build in one of these types as long as it's connected via my network. So this is connected via my network and I could build in Warsaw if I wanted to using either of the types I choose. Anytime these cards are spent, they go back to their supply up here and not into a player's discard pile. So we're going to fast forward a little bit because I've shown you one of each of these actions throughout that playthrough so far. So we're going to say that all of these cards have gone and players are on their last amount of cards. Now if there are no cards in the deck, players simply play their actions until they run out of cards. As soon as all players have run out of cards, you'll then go on to the canal era scoring phase. So we'll go ahead and do what I showed you earlier on in the video where they'll score points. As soon as you've done the rail era, you will shuffle all cards, including the one discarded from both players supply. You'll give those a good shuffle, pop them on there. Each player will get eight cards and you repeat the rail phase exactly as you did the canal phase. There are some changes which I'll explain in a moment, but when you go onto the rail phase, you need to get rid of all level one buildings that are on the board. So in this case, it would actually be all of the buildings because they are all level ones. You do not remove them from your board. The only way to get rid of these level ones now is you have to get rid of them via the develop technologies. So I've still got two buildings just here. Now, I can't build them because that means I can only build them in the canal phase. So the only way to get rid of these two is to spend two iron and discard them from my board. The only exception again is this level one building here can be built in any phase. Also for any area that is now empty of beer, I will go ahead and refill that at the beginning of the era. So all spaces have a beer again. So now we're onto the rail phase, and ideally in the canal phase, you would have wanted to get some level two or higher buildings, so you've got somewhere to start. So let's say that this is purple and this is red, who have built a level two building. We're now on the rail phase. The difference with this is when you're building your network, instead of paying three to build a canal, it's now a little bit it's now a little more expensive to build a railway. So to build a rail, we simply turn over all our tokens there on the rail side, and it's now gonna cost me five money and one coal. Now, if I want to build that, not only does this have to be part of my network, but I have to have a link to coal. So this guy hasn't got a coal mine. The only way I can really build that is to go here. I'd spend the five money, and because it's linked to a coal, I can go ahead and spend the one coal from here. The other thing you can do for one action is you can build two railways. However, it's going to start to get expensive. It will cost me 15 money, it will cost me two coal, and I need a beer. Now you'll notice that red is a little bit stuck. They're not linked to any coal mine, which is very difficult. What they can do though, is they can build another coal mine just here, they put their three coal on it, and then from here, they can start building their railway, because say if they pay five money on one coal, they can place a building there and spend the coal from here. Similarly, if they wanted to place another rail, they could place one here, and again, take from this coal mine, because 
it's all connected. So with this building, you could place up to three as long as it was linked to that network. You would do that until the deck runs out again and then you would do the final scoring, which is simply score for your buildings and your rail links, and that would be the end of the game. Now, the actions and the round is really simple to follow. There are some small little rules as you play. That can feel a bit fiddly as you play, because there's lots of things to take into account. This is where this area here comes in very useful. So just as an overview, if you're spending coal, it needs to be part of your rail or boat link, either to one of these main cities that you can see on the board with the coal symbol, or you need to be linked to one of your own coal mines. Iron can be spent from anywhere on the board, so if there are none on the board, you can then buy from the supply. And then if you're selling and you're trying to consume the beer, if you own it, then it can be spent from anywhere. It doesn't have to be part of a link. However, if you want to use somebody else's, it's gotta be part of your network. So that is just a very quick reminder of how resources are spent due to links. That's probably the most complicated thing in this whole game. But once you get used to this, the rest of the game will become perfectly clear. Now, there are some things that maybe seemed a bit rushed because, again, it is a very... It's a very easy game to follow, but a very complex game to master. If you guys have got any questions about Brass Birmingham, please leave comments below. If I notice anything that I've missed, I'll put it in the comments below. But hopefully I've covered absolutely everything that you need to know to start playing Brass Birmingham. There we go, that was Brass Birmingham. There is a lot of game in such a small box. It is It is a very thin box, there's not much in the game itself, as you saw. The components, there weren't many, but there's a lot of depth to this game. I can see why this one is a popular game. Now I do love the fact that it is separated into two halves. It's got that Blue Lagoon feel to it, if anyone's played Blue Lagoon, where your first round is almost your setup, and then the second round is really where you press on and get your income and your points. This game is suitable for anybody that likes a typical Euro game because as I said, it's easy to pick up, but it's full of depth. I love the fact that it is just two actions per round. So two actions next person. Um, as I said at the beginning of the video, I haven't played it with more than two players, but I can imagine the downtime wouldn't be very long at all. With the two player, there isn't that much player interaction, but because of the map being so small, I can imagine there being quite a lot of interaction if you're playing with three or four players, which I believe would actually give the game more of an interesting feel. But that doesn't mean it's not interesting with just the two players, because you are pretty much using just the bottom half of the board, and space gets very tight, even with the two of you, you end up having to use each other's resource. The only thing that doesn't really get used in a two-player game, I've found, is you don't really use the market that much. There's generally enough coal and iron on the board from buildings to not even worry about that. But that's dependent on if your opponents or yourself are building coal mines and ironworks. Now the game does say one to two hours. Even with a two-player game, it's more the hour and a half mark to two hours. Still a fairly long game. However, the more you play, I think a lot of it is keep referring to the rule book and remembering what the buildings do and where you can place them and where you can spend iron from, where you can spend coal from. There's a lot of little rules. As I mentioned in the video, there's a lot of tiny rules that you have to keep checking back on. And I think that's what adds to the time. Now, I haven't played it with four players, but I can only imagine it'll probably be about a three-hour game. Just a guess, but given how long it does take with just the two, uh, it could be. But do you know what? It doesn't matter that it was long with two players, because I enjoyed every single minute of this game. There was barely any downtime, as I said, two actions and you're done. And by the time I'd done one action, it was quite quickly back round to my turn. Now, my initial thoughts before playing this, I'd seen that it was very popular. I'd seen it at Handycon and it had won their um, Game of the Weekend awards. I uh, can't remember exactly the name, but I know it had won the Game of the Weekend. And yeah, I, I thought, but why? Because you look at the front and it, it's lovely artwork, don't get me wrong, but I look at that box and it doesn't really tell me much about the game at all, really. Um, the back is kind of the same, doesn't really show a lot of what's going on. So I did put this off for quite a while. It wasn't until a buddy of mine came around and said he really wanted to learn it, 
So I said, yeah, okay, sure. Really highly rated, but wondered why. Now I see why. That It's an absolutely fantastic game, and I would recommend this to any heavy gamers out there. So if you guys have got any questions about the game, feel free to ask me in the comments below, and I will reply to them as soon as I can. In the meantime, please check out my Facebook, Instagram, and my Twitter pages, where I've got a big community going there, and we're always talking about games, so come along and join us for that chat. Please check out my Patreon because this will really help me get some better quality videos in the future and more videos coming your way. And the most important thing of all, subscribe to my channel please, that will really help me as well. Now I know this was a long video, I did try to keep it as short as possible but you know, there's so much depth to this game that unfortunately it ended up being a long one. But for now I'm going to leave you to it, I will say goodbye and catch you on the next video.